Okay. It should be showing, it should be showing it now. Okay. In case uh, you may not know, uh, Jerry Griffin works over at the training center, and he's one of our gurus, uh, besides our Jeff, uh, on the uh, whole Cornerstone LMS that's coming up. Uh, Jerry, uh, just go ahead and show us what it can do. Okay. Well, thanks, John, and thanks for thanks for the invite. And uh, it's been kind of a long journey here the last uh, last uh, probably 15 months for me because most of my life has been consumed with this new LMS and the transition. And uh, so we've probably about the last four to five months we've been, and you know, the, the decision was made at the end of September of 2014, or end of August really of 2014, to move forward with acquiring this uh, cornerstone on demand system that you're seeing in, in front of us here. And uh, we had and we had gone through a lengthy kind of a, a process and looking at other systems, and you know, the Department of Commerce just decided that it was time to to move to another system and to leave Learn.com and or the Oracle system now and and kind of move on to this system. And they felt like that this system here would offer um, better capabilities for future expansion and also some more flexibility that you know things that we functionality that we currently didn't have or was kind of minimal on the Learn.com system. So I thought uh, John asked me if I'd just kind of give folks a little bit of background, a little bit of, uh, on, on the system here, what it can do, and a few things of how it's going to be different from the, their current LMS. And I, I think, you know, I think uh, the end users, and when we kind of look at this, I think folks will find that this system here offers uh, uh, much greater flexibility and, and benefits, and certainly being able to, to locate training. And you'll see in a minute when I log in that uh, uh, you know everything will be right on a page, right on the main page, and and uh, you know the, the the training can be assigned to people. It can be um, it's very it has a very nice search engine on the system here, which I'll show. And you can you can do a lot more. Uh, I think it's just going to be easier for the end users to be able to log in, take their training, and then and, and even locate training and so forth. Um, so anyway, a um, couple things about this new system. We are, um, uh, you know, in our current LMS, we've had these regional. So we've had the primary NWS learning center, and then we've had these regional sublearn centers. Well, that whole concept of sublearn centers disappears with this new Cornerstone system. Uh, everybody in the entire Department of Commerce will log into the same system. But what happens is, is based on your user profile, it will route you to your uh, home page that, uh, that will be specific uh, just to you. Um, for example, National Weather Service will have their, home their, their own home page. Uh, NOAA will have their own home page. And then some of the other bureaus in the Department of Commerce will have their own pa home page. So based on your user profile, the system will know what home page to direct you to. Now, what we'll have is, and one of the nice things is, we're only going to have one. Everybody's going to log into the same URL. Now, we have a, uh, right now, we have a pilot site, and it's our test site, and it's at docpilot.csod.com. And uh, that's the one that I'll show you this morning. The production site, which I do have access to, but there's not there's very little content in the production site. The the URL for that one will be doc.csod.com, and everybody in the Department of Commerce will use that URL to log into the system, and they're going to uh, they're actually going to uh, this page here will look. They're actually going to uh, spiff up this page here quite a bit, and they will add the uh, the links to the eSkill support will be on this page. And I think there's going to be uh, they're going to tailor this one to look at look you know for the Department of Commerce. So this page here is actually going to change. This just happens to be Cornerstone's default page for our pilot site. So let me go ahead and log in, and then we can kind of go from there and kind of talk some specifics. And I'll just, I'm going to log in using my uh, my admin account, and we can talk about uh, what what uh, new functionality you guys will be getting. If I can log in correctly here.
Okay. Now, I, uh, one thing let me mention to you about this. I, you, when, when you log in, you're automatically taken to your welcome page, or what we refer to as the home page. And our home page for weather service is going to look entirely different than what you're seeing here. Uh, matter of fact, let me just go ahead and I'll kind of pull up a, a mock-up of what it may look like. I'm just going to quickly pull this one up for you here. It's going to look something like that's what I've got right here. Let me go back to that thing. So it's going to look something like this one here. And um, uh, this, uh, the, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about this whole DOC logo. DOC was insistent that everybody have at least a standard logo on their system that had the Department of Commerce in it. So we all, this, this, this notion of standardization is kind of across the board, even coming down from up high. So uh, they allowed us to at least let us go in and put our own individual logos up in the header. And then uh, these will be the, the little things across the top, these little main menu areas. Uh, all of the, all, everybody will have something across the top. The, uh, and that that'll actually how it will be able to, to navigate the system. That's one way of being able to navigate the system. And then down in this main section, the the system will have a um, an area where right now what we've what we've tentatively got planned for, we'll have the, the primary search engine right through here where you can just simply click on this and it'll take you to a a browse for uh, for search for training. And I'll show you just what that'll look like in a few minutes. And then also you have a, a section where you can actually take a look at your training in progress on your transcripts. And then in the new system, uh, learning plans are called curricula. So, well, the, so there is going to be a little bit of some change in terminology, but uh, this is where you could actually uh, click on this and actually go and, and view what, uh, what learning plans uh, the, the user is currently signed up for. And then, of course, here's one that goes back to just simply my transcripts. Over here on the upper right, we're actually going to have a section. This is not quite right there. We're actually going to have a section for news and announcements, very much like what you have in the current Learn Center. So we'll post all of the new, uh, new training items and anything coming out in that section. And then there'll be a, um, uh, I think there's going to be one of the boxes or one of these little widgets here will be something like my, uh, my assigned training, or I think maybe we'll have this my training moved down. And one of the things about this system here is, is that uh, training can be assigned even from up in DOC level. So for example, these, uh, this the training like the no fear training that we have to take every two years, or um, some of this NOAA IT security training, or the NOAA safety training, or anything that's mandated of those, uh, those types of training can be actually assigned to everybody in the department or within a, a bureau. And once they do that, it would actually automatically show up in your uh, section called My Training. So that's one of the nice flexibilities of the system is, is it can be uh, the training can be assigned to uh, to a user, and it'll actually appear on the page. So there's no more of having to go search for it in the search engine or try to figure out what version to take. If uh, if the Department of Commerce wants to assign training to everybody in the department they'll be able to do that with the system here, and it will actually just show up on your page. And then we'll have a couple other widgets now. This My Inbox here, the system has a communications uh, messaging system, so that the handle approvals and various other things, you know, if you've been approved for training, uh, the system does have an SF-182 system built into it that's a little more robust and is actually working um, that uh, we had issues with in the Learn.com system. And, we probably won't implement that right away. It'll probably be a phase two item, but that will be coming down the road. And, and hopefully that'll free up Jeff from having to enter in SF-182s and external training into the system because they've actually, Cornerstone has actually taken that uh, SF-182 form, which I guess, I guess that's going to be with me in my entire career. I figured I was hoping OPM was going to eventually get rid of that form, but they're not. And uh, but anyway, Cornerstone's taken that form and actually built it into their system. And um, so we'll see more of that down the road. And, uh, and then so, so we're, and we're probably going to tailor some of this a little bit. Right now, uh, it's still kind of work in progress. One of our the eSkills, our third-party support vendor, is actually building the page for us, and they uh, they're moving on it right now. And 
we haven't seen the final uh, the final draft, but hopefully to see that in the next couple of weeks and and uh, be able to show that to uh, to people. All right, so let me go ahead and minimize this and go back to the pilot site. Oh, and oh, by the way, that the, the uh, 24 by 7 live support that that'll actually be up in this upper right there. So there'll be a link there that uh, you know if you needed to you know if you needed some help uh, uh, with uh, with live support, you could click on that link and actually open up that chat session there. All right. All right, so let me go back. So anyway, some of these, these different little areas and widgets are things that we're just testing on the system and, and so forth. So, um, so just kind of a disregard some of this. And you'll notice that across the top, I've got a lot more menu items. And, and even with your facilitator accounts, you won't have near this number of menu items. So don't, don't freak out about all some of this. It's just part of all the, since I've got all of the permissions to the site, I, I have to kind of put up with some of these. But, um, a couple of the cool things that I wanted to show people about this. Let me just uh, pull something over here. There we go. All right, this thing has a couple, uh, couple global search engines. It actually has, a, it has two different searches. It has a global search in it. So up here in the upper right, if somebody up in this little search box, if you were just looking for a particular uh, piece of training, and uh, you knew part of the name of it, you could simply type it in here. For example, if I did something like this, and I knew this, this, this ASCAT WINS uh, training session was here, I could just simply just buy, it has a, uh, uh, a predictive search part engine to it, and just by typing in those three letters, I quickly found this training item, and I could launch it straight from there. And uh, now this is a, it's taking just a second here, because this is a pilot site. But it would pull up the training item, and I could simply, uh, I could launch the training just like this just by clicking on it. And one of the things the system will have is, is uh, I may have already started this one here, is um, there'll be a, when you first, there'll be a request button. And you'll click on the launch, and it'll come up on the right-hand side. It'll say request training. And, uh, and so you'll, you'll end up doing, hitting, the, hitting the request button. I'll see if I can find one to show you that. And you'll request it because this system actually has an approval process that could be implemented for all of the training items in the system. We're not planning on doing that, but uh, some of the bureaus in the Department of Commerce actually um, want to set up an approval process for even people taking online training uh, courses. But uh, what we'll do is, is once you click on the register button, and then uh, you'll be able to, uh, it, your, your page will refresh, and then you'll actually be able to, you'll see another button that says launch the course. So let me go back to the home page. You can get back up on the home page either by just clicking on the home up here at the top here, and it always brings you back to, uh, back to your welcome page. So that's one search engine that you have. So anything that you put in there, you can put in any type of, 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 type of a, a course name or fragment of a course name. Or, or any type of a learning object that's in this system. And uh, we can stick in here. We can do the standard web-based training items. We can put in the instructor-led type training. We can uh, other types of learning objects or the learning plans. You can, do, uh, you can do videos. We can set up links to reading documents. We can set up links to any type of web page or external sites. Um, so there's a, and, and all of that information is searchable. So even, even uh, learning plans are searchable in this system. Uh, any type of, uh, any, almost any type of, of learning object that we put in this system is actually searchable, which is really good. Uh, we didn't have that capability in the, in the Oracle system. Now, the other part of the search engine is down in this section called Browse for Training. And uh, I'll show you a couple things about this. One of the things uh, that we're going to do is under this Browse for Training, we've got uh, we're actually going to have our topical areas under the NWS. So, what we in, in the in the Oracle system, we had our topical areas across the main menu. Of course, our course catalog system. Well, this system here is a little bit different in how they set up a course catalog. But um, under this Browse for Training area, we can have uh, this NWS, and then we can have all of the topical areas underneath this NWS section there. And then you could quickly just simply go to one of those. So I could click on that, and that would take me to uh, this Browse for Training page. 
and it would show me anything that's been mapped to that aviation weather uh, subject area. So that's one thing we can do. Now, one of the things we're going to have is we're probably going to have an NWS one. We'll probably also have a NOAA one that we can span out because there's a, a number of training items that especially some of the budget folks and administrative assistants and uh, some of the finance people take training you know, currently in the NOAA Learning Center. And the way things work with this system, since we're not going to have individual separate learning centers, what happens is, is that when I load a piece of training content into the system, I determine who can view that training. So if I want to, uh, if I load up a, a web-based training course, and I want the entire Department of Commerce to be able to search and find that training item, I can do that. However, if I took that same content and I said, you know, I only wanted maybe the Pleasant Hill office staff to look at that training, I could do that too. So you can, you can, you can expand it to everybody in the department can see it, or you can restrict access to any type of learning object and just even restrict it down to if you only wanted just one user to see something this in this system, you can do that. So the system offers that flexibility. Uh, so every time that we load learning uh, content into the system, we have to make a decision on, uh, on who will be able to search for it in the system. So that's how they get away with not having uh, separate learning centers and how we can also restrict content. So that, therefore, you guys don't have to look at stuff that the Census Bureau loads on there or any content that U.S. Patent Trade Office loads. We can just simply you know, focus on either National Weather Service training and or NOAA Pacific training or some of those mandatory courses that DOC uh, publishes. Jerry, this is Dan Baumgarten Lacrosse. I have a question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, how easy is it for us to get our training into this system, our local SU, uh, to up, upload our own training and get that into the portfolio now and, and track that? Is it, is it there? Uh, is the ability there? Yeah, the ability is there. And uh, we're going to give you guys some permissions to be able to, to actually uh, load up our learning plans. Um, now, the web-based training courses, if, if some of you have some of that, and I've kind of looked around, because I, I, I did a survey in, uh, in all of the sub-learn centers within Weather Service, and uh, what, what, I've, what I typically found was most, it seemed like most SUs were creating links to either a PowerPoint presentation, there were a few articulate, some of them were Camtasia uh, presentations, some of them were uh, journal articles, there, were, there was a variety of different uh, items in the system. So for web-based tech training items or items that you guys want to link to videos, the best thing that we're going to do is, at least in the beginning, is to work with either me or Ross or uh, you know, in the training division here to, to help you get that content loaded. I think eventually we, uh, we might be able to uh, create some addition permissions. But one of the things that this system is um, is uh, a little bit different about that there's, there's there's both pros and cons on some things. But uh, when it comes to like a web-based training course, if we just look at one something like what the training center produces, or one that like uh, the warning decision training branch produces there, and this is, let's assume it's an articulate course. We'll just use that as a what they, what they require us to do in order for it to properly track within the system, we have to publish that course using a set of standards that are, are out there. And uh, Articulate has those publishing standards. Uh, Captivate has those publishing standards. Uh, Camtasia can do it as well. And uh, so in order for the system to be able to track that, you end up having to publish it using these publishing standards. And I, I realize that not all of the offices have access to those types of, uh, of authoring tools. And so that's something that I think that the training division needs to, to work with, you know, work with folks if you've got a, what we think of as a web-based training course. Now, if you're going to be linking to a document or a website and you would like to have a quiz associated with that, we're going to provide those permissions to you to be able to do those types of items. So it really just kind of comes down to what you're going to be wanting to do. And, um, and okay, so if I use an example, I've got 
five small recorded training modules that I want to call a quote unquote course put up mm -hmm. to the website. They're they're whatever MP4 recording videos, and I want okay. to simply have that bundled into a package and have my staff go through that um, and be able to track it and be able to load it up to the course and have it in a learning plan. Is that is that simple to do? Is that going to be difficult for me to do, or can I do it? No, that's that's fairly straightforward. Like for example, I'll just kind of we'll just kind of go underneath the hood here just a little bit. I'll show you a couple things here. So let me go into this admin tab. And we'll we'll go to the tools here. I'll go down to learning here for a second, and uh, we're going we're going to provide you guys training on all these types of things here. But let me go to this catalog management. And under these learning objects, when I keep referring to learning objects, these are the different types of items that can actually be loaded up in the system. So curricula is learning plans. And learning plans are nothing more than a container that holds learning objects. Uh, the events and, events and sessions all refers to the instructor-led training. Um, the, uh, uh, and there's another section over here on this other right-hand side as far as the course, the course builder tools and things of that nature. That's actually what we use to uh, upload uh, online, current, uh, um, online courses. But down in this section here called materials, this is kind of a cool little feature. It's very similar to like assignments are in, the, in our current system, ex except that the big difference is this system doesn't allow you to like upload a document to like a training officer or something like that. But what you can do with it is, is you can come in and you can do set up all kinds of links of things. And I think I can show you a few that I've set up in here. So these are just some things that I just did kind of just in some test modes here. But uh, for example, this is a, a GF uh, AWIPS2 GFE uh, assignment that we have in one of our uh, in one of the uh, GFE courses that we offer here at the training center. So I think what I've done in this particular one is I've actually set it up where. And, and, and let me point out to you, all of these materials that I'm showing you, they can be added to a learning plan. So they're very easy to set up in the system here. And then every one of these can actually be added to a learning plan. And so the user can just kind of uh, launch them from the system and from their learning plan, and then do whatever, you know, whatever is being asked of them. So this happens to just be a, uh, an assignment. And I actually was able to attach a, uh, a PDF file to this that the user can simply download. And then they could, uh, you know, perform whatever action was with this particular one. Uh, you could have something like a a video link. So this one actually has a video link in here. And this this is when I, I'll show you what it looks like in the in the browse for training. You guys are seeing what it looks like when you actually set it up. But uh, you could search for this here. You could put it in the learning plan, and then the user just simply launches it. And they and whatever whatever is uh, in the uh, uh, the link is. So it could be a link to our journal article. It could be a link to a website. It could be a link to a video. So if you've got some MP4 videos, we can actually load those up on the system, or we can have them link back to a site, uh, external site, whatever, whatever works, uh, works out the best. So the answer is, is yes, some of that type of capability is very easy to do. And we'll have to provide some, some training on some of those pieces there. But if you've got any kind of a traditional web-based type training courses, whether it be articulates or whether it be uh, something else, those are types of things that we would need to work with you to help get those uploaded. But some of these other types of things, we you can you, we'll certainly provide you permissions to do that. Matter of fact, this is a here's the here's the video that that to uh, leading culture change in the weather service that we produced here. Let me show you what those look like in the. Uh, in the in the system. So I'll go back to the welcome page. And I'm going to click on this browse for training. So you can click right across this banner here. And this will take you to really probably the search engine that people are going to use the most, or at least one of them anyway. And so this is the browse for training uh, uh, search engine. And uh, so right now I've got uh, these are there are 84 different learning objects that I can uh, search and actually launch in my system right now. We just, these are just a, a mixture of different things that we put in there while we were testing the system. So for example, um, over here on the left-hand side is our different filters. So in the, under this type here, you can filter for online classes. So if I just simply click on this, 
This would show all of the web-based ta web -based, uh, training courses that are in the system that we have access to. Under, I could click on events. This would show me all of the, i take that one off, just some events. These are all the instructor-led training sessions that are available. Under this next one would be all the learning plans. So any learning plans that are added to the system, every user can search on and actually, uh, could actually even uh, sign up for them. Uh, there's quizzes, they're searchable, uh, materials. So those material items that I just showed you, this is what they would look like to the end user. Let me click this curriculum one off. So these are just a few that I added in there. So the user could search for these here. And let's do this leading culture of change. I'll click on that one. You can request it. This is a request thing that comes up. I have the assigned because I've got uh, supervisor permissions on my that uh, you saw that uh, saw that uh, that request changes defaults to the transcript page, and now you have the launch button here. You simply just simply click on it, and there you go. So whatever whatever my link to was, whether it be the video, whether it be document, whether it be a PowerPoint presentation, articulate presentation, whatever it would, it would automatically launch. It would be it would actually start when you lock it, when you uh, click on the launch button. So that's that's kind of a nice feature. I like that uh, that feature there. It's uh, and, and and all of these all of these materials can be put in a learning plan. All right. So let me go back and uh, just. All right. There we go. All right. And a couple other things I just wanted to show you real quick, like on this browser training. All right. So you can now those subjects that I showed you earlier that were under the browse for training. I don't. This is one thing I don't really like. It, the, the you don't even recognize this as a link here until you actually hover over. it. But we're going to have all of our topical areas. I don't have them all in there yet, but we're going, to, we're going to have all of our topical areas. So if you want to search for a course by topic under one of these topical areas, you could do that. Okay. Um, and we only just got a, a, just a smattering of stuff in there right now. So, uh, but uh, so you can, you know, you can, you can simply uh, filter through and search through through stuff. Uh, you can do it that way. You can uh, you can you can search for some of these. This date range stuff is particularly for uh, specific for ILT type classes, so it doesn't work for the web-based training. I thought initially I was hoping it was going to work for when the maybe the web-based training course was loaded in the system, but it only works for the ILT. And then this system has uh, capabilities for. If you've got training in a particular location that you wanted to search for, you could do that as well. Uh, you can do you can change the sort order uh, by a few things. So you can do that. So you got this browse for training as a search feature, and then also you can come up here in this global search here, and you can put in any topic or any title that you want, and, and the system would find it, which is a uh, which I which I found has been very useful as far as that goes. All right, so let's go back here to uh, any questions on on this piece of it there on the on the browse for training piece. We we found the the, the search engine to be quite robust, much more robust than what we've dealt with uh, with in, in the, the Learn.com system. All right, let me go back to the home page here. A couple other things I wanted to show you. Let's go into the transcript part. So you can get to the transcript by multiple ways. You can even get to it from up here under the uh, the ver uh, under the learning under view your transcript. And the, the the main part of this transcript that I just wanted to mention is is that there's uh, right here under this page here there's this tab, and the there's there's three little sections. There's active, completed, and archived. Now. This system doesn't have anything that is what we would refer to as training in progress. What they view that is is active training. So 
so what will happen is, is anything that you have launched that you haven't completed yet will appear on this active, uh, this active area. So that's what I've got showing right here. And so you see over here on the right, these are all the different little launches. This is where you actually would launch the training. So you just simply come over and click on the, on the launch button there and, and you can launch it. Anything that I've completed shows up under the completed tab. Okay. Now, there's one other tab that we have, which is kind of new, and it's called Archived. So for example, under the Archive one, I don't think I have anything. I do have a couple things. You could, if you if say for example, your transcript, you've got a lot of, a lot of completed stuff on your transcript, and you'd like to remove some items from your transcript, or basically kind of at least get them off of the completed section, you could actually move them down to that archive section and kind of get them out of the way. Also, if, and this happens quite frequently, is say that you started something up under the active section and you, you launched it by mistake or you have no interest in completing it, you could actually move that to, uh, you could actually move that to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, archive section as well. So there's, there's, uh, there's some pretty nice stuff, at least for those flex flexibility. Some of this other pieces up across the top, we can't, we unfortunately have not been able to remove this cost piece. So we're going to have to, and we're still looking at that, whether that can be removed. But that's uh, something that looks like it may be fixed there. And we're hoping we can might be able to change some of this across the top there. A couple of nice things about this, though, this has been a big request, is the sorting of, of transcripts. So if you go to your archive, your completed section, you can actually sort by different ways. You can sort by title. You can sort by, sort by status. You can sort by the date it was added to your transcript. Uh, you can do the completion date. So there's multiple ways to sort your, your transcript, whereas we haven't had that capability in the, uh, in the Oracle system. So that's, a, that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, up here in the upper right, when we get this eventually fixed, this is actually where users are going to be able to go in and actually request external training. And what will happen is, is this will, they click on this, this will actually bring up a, the start of a SF-182 form. That, uh, and uh, we're going to have to provide some training on this because the, the user, the end user will be the one that actually starts this starts the, at least the initial request. And then what will happen is, is once they go through the various steps, it will be, they'll click a submit button, and uh, they'll, it's a workflow process. And it will either go, probably go to the supervisor next, and then it could go to an approver. And there's some flexibility on how we want to do this. And then eventually, probably after it goes to an approver, uh, it probably goes to somebody in region. And we're going to have to, that's one of the things we're, probably, we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kind of get together with all the regions within Weather Service and, and, uh, and uh, kind of come up with kind of this whole process. And we can do this per region. So if Central Region has one approval process or wants it to go to somebody up in the region, we can set that up. And it can be different from maybe, say, like what we do down in Southern Region or what we do out in Western, or how they do it up in some of the headquarters up at uh, uh, offices. So we, we, we'll, but more on that, we're not going to try to roll this functionality out on, on day one. It's going to be a little while before we get to actually this part. But this was one of the reasons. And this is, you know, um, I know you guys were talking about, the, and Jeff's talking about the SF-182. And the other bureaus within the Department of Commerce, SF-182s are used extensively. And uh, so this was this was this was a very appealing option to a lot of the bureaus in the, in the Department of Commerce. All right, let's go back. Let's make sure I think I've covered uh, those pieces there. And user profile. This is you know, kind of what we see in our, our current system. You'll be able to. Um, you'll be able to, folks will actually have abilities to come in and kind of edit some things that they want to. We haven't really decided all of that. Um, the system has some, some social tools with it. So you actually can kind of go in and set up a variety of teams. So some of these, uh, 
know, for example, some of the, the, the Sioux teams that I heard you guys talking about earlier, you could actually go in the system here and set up your regional Sioux teams or any kind of collaboration teams. You could have those in the system here, and, and it, it has a, uh, you know, a messaging dialogue that, that can kind of go back and forth, kind of a forum type uh, look to it. I don't think we've got any. I don't know if we've got anything in here or not. If there's just been a few just odds and ends in here, but you can actually invite people to join your teams, and I'll join Maria's team here. This is a, I think this is a USPTO team. But uh, you'll have that capability. You can set up communities in here, kind of communities of practice. They can be set up in this system here. And then you also have a separate area called a knowledge bank, which you could go in and you could set up different topicals, different topics on many different subjects. You can upload documents, PDFs, uh, presentations, all kinds of things associated with these different topics as well. Matter of fact, it's probably where we'll end up eventually um, putting up some of the job sheets that we use for some of the uh, Winterstone training that we've provided in, the, in years past. All right, so we've got the, the social tools, uh, different, uh, different things under this learning tab. I think what will happen is the end users are going to have a home tab. They're going to have this connect tab. We'll have this learning tab. We'll have a need help tab. That's going to need to be configured. And then I think they will have probably this. There will be an admin tab, but it's not going to have near what I, have, what I show on here. Matter of fact, that admin tab may not be on there for end users. The admin tab for, for the facilitators, for you guys, for permission-wise, you will have this. And uh, I, will, I will say this, this is, you know, there's always pros and cons on every system. I, I don't find sometimes navigating this particular uh, submenu tab versus the control panel in the Learn Center, this is a little more, I find it a little more difficult to navigate. Now, the nice thing is you guys won't have all of these these different, uh, you won't have all of this stuff that shows up online, but you will have one that either says core functions and probably learning to it. And uh, you know, a lot of most of your stuff will be down here, like in the learning. So you click on the learning, go to catalog management, come down here to like curricula. And this is actually where you would uh, basically create a new learning plan. Now, one of the things that you guys You'll see right now, since I have access to everything within the department, I see all of the learning plans that have been created in this test system. I think when you guys get your set of permissions, you're only going to see learning plans that have been created within National Weather Service. So that'll, that'll be good. You won't have to see uh, everything. And then it's, you know, it's a pretty straightforward process, uh, creating learning plans. Um, a couple things this system has about learning plans. It has the ability to create uh, different sections within a learning plan. So, uh, you know, let's say that you had uh, maybe 10 different courses and you wanted to subdivide those up into different sections within your learning plan, kind of divide them up a little bit and give each section a different name. You can do that with this system here. I don't know if I've got one that. I don't think I have, I don't think I have one that shows that, but here's my uh, particular one. And we'll, we'll, we're going to actually have some job sheets. We're actually going to have some webinars and some job sheets on all of this. I'm filling this out, so don't I won't I won't spend too much time going over the, the details of it today. This uh this this area though of availability. Is what uh, let's go to the next page. Hold up the back up here. All right. This availability is something you'll see in this system no matter where you're at. This is actually kind of key importance in this system because this is actually how you make training available. This is how it determines who can actually search for a piece of content and actually find it. And uh, so what ends up happening is, is 
under this search under the select criteria, if you were to select all employees, everybody in the entire Department of Commerce would be able to have access to uh, this, this learning plan if I was to set that up. Now, in this system here, in our, in our Oracle system, we had things called groups. So all of our organizational structure, all of our offices were put into groups. This system, in, with respect to the data feed, calls, calls the groups actually divisions. So for example, let me show you this, how this works. So I click on the division, and I'll click on this little uh, search, search feature. Now, I'm going I'm to show you the hard way to do this, and I'll show you the easy way, but I, I'm doing this for a purpose. So right now, all of the groups in the Department of Commerce show up under this particular one I'm pointing to now. You'll see that all the different bureaus, and you'll see here's, here's NOAA. Then, uh, then you've got all the different, ideas, the different ones in NOAA. And I got several pages here. All right. So eventually, you find National Weather Service. I open up National Weather Service, and I get down to the regions. And then here's Central Region. And then here's all the different offices within the region. And there's uh, we need to see if we can actually increase the number. There's 51, 51 different offices here in Central Region. Hey Jerry, this is Jamie. Jerry, I got a huh? question again. Sure, sure. Yeah, I I don't have much time left on this call. I got to hit it pretty quick here, but um, I guess I'm I'm curious. That, so the learning plans aren't going to be ported over. So uh, can you just give me what you think um, a nutshell version would be on how to how to do, do, should I print those from my, the old system? Is the old system going to be up so I can? Look at the old system and build them into the new system. Uh, what's your recommended? Um, well, uh, we can actually run that. reports. So we can actually run reports for you right now and actually uh, grab all of the content out of any learning plan that you want to move over to the new system. And then I can uh, and then I can share those reports with you. And you can use those as a reference. So we can we can do that. And I'm glad you brought that up because uh, that's one of the things, uh, learning plans are something that uh, Cornerstone doesn't have a process that we can use to import uh, learning plans uh, in the system. And uh, you know, right now in National Weather Service, you know, we've got, I, I, this has been a challenge for us here because I go to learning plans and we have got uh, 1,500 in, uh, learning, active learning plans right now. Now we, we kind of realize that, that we know that a number of these learning plans are probably not being used. And, uh, but we, we really, us administrators, have we, really no way of knowing that. But uh, so if folks would, uh, uh, if you would let me, let, let me know which ones you would like to migrate over, we can run a report in the system and uh, actually collect all the learning objects, training items in that learning plan, and you can use that as a reference for our future use. Yep. All right, so uh, do we email that to you then? Yeah, just, just send it to uh, lms.nws, and we'll all get it. Myself will get it, and Ross will get it. Andy Woods is also on the team. And uh, most of you, I think most of you kind of know this. That Don has moved on to. Uh, he's still with the LMS, but he's actually the uh, CLC program manager for NOAA. So, uh, so he's kind of uh, working at it from a NOAA level. But uh, myself and Ross Van Til out of the forecast decision training branch. Ross and I are doing all national uh, LMS work. Andy Woods down at Warning Decision Training Branch is pretty much handling. Um, tasks for WB, uh, WDTB, so he's not really not doing too much of the national uh, efforts, but he's certainly collaborating with Ross and myself. But uh, yeah, the uh, learning plans will not be imported over, uh, but uh, there was some to, sit, to, some to talk about uh, maybe getting some eSkills folks to help migrate some of those over, but I'm, 
you know, I, I don't think I, I really don't. I'm not very optimistic that that's going to happen because we could potentially have you know 150 learning plans alone in National Weather Service, and they just don't have the resources. I don't believe to to, to enter all those in. But uh, so, um, uh, but the the training history is going to be migrated over. I think Jeff sent this out to you guys. Everything. So all of the all of the training history. Uh, for the past eight years or eight plus years, everything that we've got in the Learn.com system is going to be moved over to the new system, and uh, it may not be there on June the first, but uh, they're they're trying to make a big effort to get it in there. But it may be, it may take a month for us to work out everything, but that's going to be moved over. Uh, all of our online content that is published is going to be moved over. And then, of course, we'll build out the instructor-led training sessions and things that are that need to be built out. We'll we'll create all those. But pretty much all of the learning content that's in the active learning content in the uh, Learn.com system will be moved over. Now, one of the things that uh, will not be moved over right away, and I'll just have to work with you guys on this, is any of the some of the content that you guys have built out in your sub-learn centers. Uh, I've taken a look at it, but since it's not in the, you know, in what Cornerstone refers to as a course, kind of a, uh, it, it would fall under one of those other things like materials or um, some other type of learning object in the system. I'm just going to have to work with you guys to kind of get some of that reloaded in because there's really no way. There's no process right now for us to be able to import those things in. So things that were like assignments, even though you use courses in the Learn.com system, we are not going to have. Um, it's, we're not going to have. Um, it's going to be a different process. I'll just leave it at that for right now. Um, the system does have some uh, publishing, different publishing capabilities. Uh, in terms of being able to get uh, uh, kind of a, a, it's something like a Learn.com uh, course editor and module editor, but um, you need a different set of permissions for those. And uh, we, we've kind of, right now, at least in the beginning, we've got limited permissions to those. So we're, that's something we're still trying to work through. It's, it's kind of a, it's a, kind of a bizarre, uh, bizarre uh, function within this Cornerstone system that they don't give everybody permissions. To uh, matter of fact, right here in this this section right here, course publisher and this course builder and modular builder, you have to have a separate set of permissions that we act that Weather Service. As a matter of fact, all of the bureaus have to pay extra to be able to get permissions to those two three items, and it's 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 bizarre. We never never expected that until we got well into this and noticed, hey, well, look, we don't have the permissions here. What's what's going on? And then it's when we found out about it. So we were we're working through that right now. But initially, you wouldn't have permissions to be able to do these two items here. But uh, but but you know we're we're prepared to work through that to try to get your time in. In this, I just wanted to jump in here. I know we're well past yeah. our end time of 11:30, and I know some of you may need to go. So uh, that's just fine. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, Jerry, did. Did, was there a was there a few more things you wanted to show before we wrap it up today? Well, I, I can just open up any specific questions. You know, there's, okay. there's always lots of things I could do, but uh, you know, I can probably cut it off now and I open it up to questions or anything. You know, anything about the system, either this current LMS or uh, or the one you know uh, the one that we have, I'll be more than happy to answer. Hey, Jerry, this is John question. Northland. I just want to make it. Uh, trying to make sure I understand this. So the, like the flash flood uh, learning plan that I set up for all of our staff here, I'm going to have to recreate that after June 1st. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. And uh, what we're, <clears throat> we're we're actually going to have to kind of do the same boat. And what we're going to do is is all of the learning plans that all of the training facilities have. We've got to create those, and that uh, the the uh, the national. Uh, flash flood hydrology one will be created in the system, and um, one of the things that we're going to do to try to do first, because we're we're not we're not 100% sure that we're going to get all of the, the the training items in the system by June the first, so we're going to focus on getting 
all of the critical content in the system first. So that would be anything that would maybe AWIPS2 related that's uh, needed for implementation. We will focus on the tropical training. We'll focus on anything with AWOC related because they're spinning up on June the 1st. Or uh, anything with that flash flood hydrology learning plan, we'd make sure those items are in the system. So we may get farther along than we, than we, we, we realize. We're just not sure yet. We're just starting the process of bulk up uploading courses into the system, uh, I think, this week. So we'll know, we'll know how that goes uh, by probably in the next week or so. But yes, unfortunately, those, uh, those learning plans uh, that you've built out will have to be created in the system. And we can work with you. There's going to be some training sessions on that. Matter of fact, uh, matter of fact, here's kind of the uh, I signed out on that thing here. I was going to show you this, but I've signed I signed out on my. Let's see if I can. There it is, right there. Let's see if I can get to it. Yeah, let's, let's see here. See if I can pull there. It is right there. Matter of fact, here's the since you mentioned about the talking about training. Here's the actual training sessions that we're going to be doing here in the upcoming uh, month or so. So we're actually going to have some on some of these topics here. But uh, since we're talking about learning plans, right now we're, we're we're geared to have a session on learning plans May the 28th, and then we'll do another one on June the 24th. We're hoping to have we should have some job sheets available. Maybe even before these dates here, but uh, uh, but these are some scheduled dates that are you know at least right now they're on paper. Uh, we're working with our eSkills uh, third-party provider. They're going to do the initial training for us since myself and Ross are so wrapped up in all of the configurations and moving content over and handling all of the national training stuff. So we've we've uh, kind of partnered with eSkills to actually, uh, and we've been working with them to kind of tailor training just specifically for NOAA National Weather Service. So right now, these are the topics that we have. Learning plans is one. Reporting management is one topic. And that'll be uh, first session in May the 27th, and then I think the next session on June the 23rd. Uh, an instructor-led training session. You guys may not they may not need as much as this one as some of some of the instructors and other folks. Some of the learning coordinators may have to you know maybe need more of this topic. And then this web-based training one management that you see here, I think we're going to broaden that topic. I think I, I asked uh, Don and, and Mark Sessing, so Mark's they working with these skills to broaden that topic up to include materials. I'd like to really have that section in there because I think that would be there's not many. Uh, like I say, right now, early on, not too many people are going to have permissions to be able to, certainly to create uh, online content in the system there. There is a piece there in the catalog that people could, could help, help manage it there, but we'll have to see about that. So those are the ones that we've got right now. Some future topics we want to do, uh, basically creating quizzes uh, in the system. Uh, I've got this material management that, uh, that we just spoke of. We've also got to do some training on for supervisors, so um, that'll be something that we'll uh, we'll have to do as well. But those are those will be coming later at a later date. Hey Jerry, this is Dan up in Duluth with a couple of quick questions um, mm -hmm. along the lines of training for supervisors. Um, I'll ask a question that came up a lot after the transition to our current LMS. Mm -hmm. um, will Supervisors and SUS get notification emails when um, some of our assigned staff uh, um, completes training. That was that was actually probably the, one of the most useful things in the original LMS, and it went away, as you know, with the one we currently have. Do you know if that capability will be coming back? And then the second question, um, I think Jeff Mannion answered it in his email, but just to make it absolutely clear. The current training records for everybody will transfer over, but maybe just not right away, correct? That's correct. Yeah. OK, yes. and then do you know anything about those completion notification emails? Yeah, right. Yeah, the, well, the completion uh, notification emails are set up in the system to go directly to the supervisor. 
And uh, we're still exploring to see if there's some way that they can be directed to you guys as well. Um, right now, since this is a commercial off-the-shelf system, and pretty much out in the commercial in the commercial world, it's the supervisor that manages training. So that's why they build these systems. So you know, co completion emails and all of the email traffic goes back to the supervisor. And uh, they, we do have ways to to set up individual emails that would go to other people, but not on an automated basis. So we're we're still exploring that piece of it. So have, part of it is yes, they will go to supervisors, and we can set so this system has an extensive messaging system. But the piece of it is is being able to try to get them to actually go to you guys without having your supervisor set up some you know, some mail rules and have them forwarded to you. We're, we're still working on that piece. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Hey, Jerry. This is Phil uh -huh. Um I was just curious, um, in terms of completed training, how is there a date by which they need to complete the training or there's a risk it won't move over, or is it getting moved on May, midnight, May 31? Well, what, what we're doing is we're kind of doing it in different um, uh, batches. So here, um, in, in, um, here at the, uh, the end of April, we are getting a complete data dump from Oracle. And uh, we're going to use that data dump there to move over uh, a large chunk of the content, uh, training history content. The, the any training that occurs during the month of May, we're going to run individual reports. So the department's going to run some, we're going to run some, and then we're going to use those reports um, to actually move over training history for any training that is taken during the month of May. We may get one final data dump from Oracle after June the 1st, but uh, that's still to be determined. It kind of depends uh, on how things go in May with our own running our own reports. So it, it will come in waves there. Uh, the, the plan is, we're hoping is, is that by July the 1st, all of the training history will have been moved in. At least that's the plan right now. And I should say, uh, this is, I know this is all kind of coming at a surprise to a number of folks. This wasn't the plan. <laughs> uh, by, I, I've been on, since, uh, since uh, October the 1st, I've been on numerous meetings. And the, the original project plan was uh, to roll out uh, May the 1st. And uh, we were supposed to have been farther along. Uh, but what happened was is due to some, it, it took longer to get the agreements in place up at DOC. And basically, those agreements were tied to funding that uh, in order for Cornerstone to actually start doing some of the work in the system. And uh, so it, it took longer to get those agreements in place. So we, we're really almost two months behind where the original project plan had us. And in the original project plan, there were going to be communication messages that were going to come out to the field as early as back in January. And, uh, and then they got pushed back into February, and things kept getting delayed. and so. So uh, I, know, I know some folks have been upset because they haven't felt like they've gotten everything, all the messaging. Every time that they got prepared to release a set of messaging, the, the dates have changed on the system. So originally we were May the 1st, and then it was, May, it, was, it was talk about May the 18th, and now we're to June the 1st. And, uh, and there's even a, a slim possibility and I'll just say this as a slim possibility just to kind of show you how fluid the situation is, that we could even extend the Oracle contract for some period of time. And no decision has been made on that yet, but I expect a decision to be made here in the next week. Um, and then, of course, that would, there's, that would give us more time to actually implement this system and, and kind of make up for some of the time that we've lost here over the last two months. But I will underscore there that, that that decision has not been made. And so right now, officially, we're still going to launch on June the 1st. 
Any other questions? So it's not all Jeff's fault, and I know, I know some of you guys have been warning some messaging and some communication, and we kept expecting that. We were going to put something out, and we, we tried to do some as best we could, but uh, the, the, the launch dates have even changed three or four times only just in the last couple months here. So that's where the, they, they've been struggling to, uh, and, and even some of the, even the project itself was actually scaled back in terms of the uh, training content that was going to be available on the system on, on June the 1st. So uh, that, uh, that's why I say there's still, still some unknowns actually what we're going to have in terms of content-wise and training history-wise if we launch on June the 1st. Any other questions I can answer? I know we've gone over here, but I mean, I'm more than welcome to say and stick around and answer whatever you know, anybody has. Well, Jerry, uh, thank you so much for uh, you, you know providing your time to do this today. We sure appreciate it. Oh, no problem. It. I'm, I'm happy to do it. I, like I said, I wish we had more time to be able to kind of visit all the regions and do some of this. It's... Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, have yourselves a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.